السلام عليكم الحمد لله الذي بيده عظمة الأمور وهو خالق كل شيء والمتصرف فيه من الخيرات والنشور أما بعد ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله All praise belongs to Allah in whose hand lie the control of all affairs He is the creator of all and he is the controller of all as well as good or bad good or bad inshallah we're going to talk about uh, the month of safar which just started recently and uh, there are some superstitions and bad omens associated with this month which we want to dispel my dear brothers and sisters in islam the month of safar is upon us this is the month which is taken as a bad omen by some people especially the 13th of safar or you know from 1 to 13 of safar which is known in our language as tera tezi some keep egg row eggs oil nails etc near the head of the bed and they are given away in charity the next day we call it tera tezi in our back home in our countries what is the truth about that superstitions or irrational fear of what is unknown or mysterious things especially in connection with religion are completely rejected by islam all these customs or beliefs which were prevalent in jahiliya means the days of ignorance are strongly condemned by allah and his messenger one such custom existed with respect to the month of safar among the people of the days of ignorance it was regarded as a bad omen by some people while others took it to be the herald of goodness this led to the detestable practice of shifting the months around allah rejected this custom and stated that this shifting of the month was a cause for further kufr auz billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim innama nasiu ziyadatun fil kufr similarly rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam condemned the practice of taking safar to be good or bad luck and he rejected the habit of associating sorrows and grief with it once muhammad bin rashid told rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that people were taking an ill omen from the entrance of the month of safar 
رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ دیر از نو ال اومن ان سفر ہی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آلسو سیڈ ٹیکنگ اومنس بائی دی فلائٹ آف دا برڈس اے شرک ہی ریپیٹیڈ دس تھری ٹائمس ان بخاری شریف دیر از اے حدیث نیریٹیڈ بائی ابو حرا رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ان وچ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیز لا ادوا ولا تیرا ولا ہام متا ولا سفر دیر از نو اسپریڈنگ آف ڈیزیز فرام ون پرسن ٹو ان ادر ایکسیپٹ وتھ اللہ پرمیشن نائدر از دیر اینی ٹیکنگ آف اومنس فرام دا فلائٹ آف برڈس نور اینی ایول ان دا ساؤنڈنگ آف دی آؤل and neither there is any ill fortune in the month of safar there are various explanations of this hadith the word tiara denoting evil omen associated with the flight of birds and the word hamat meaning owl relate to the belief of the arabs of the period of ignorance They believe that after a person dies, his or her soul enters in a bird. While some use birds to determine good or bad omens. They also considered the owl itself as a bad omen and if it sat on someone's house it is a sign of death for the resident of that house this kind of belief is contrary to the teachings of islam There is a hadith in Sunan Abu Dawood on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said considering anything unlucky is like associating something with Allah most high that means shirk Mulla Ali Kari writes in the interpretation of this hadith, considering anything unlucky is shirk because in the days of ignorance, people believed that by acting upon such consideration, they would receive some benefit. And if any person thinks that someone or something is capable of exerting influence on its own without the will of Allah most high then it is called shirk and it's a shirk jali <coughs> Imam Qazi Iyaz says the holy prophet sallallahu declared this is a shirk because those people held the belief that the thing they consider as unlucky has influence in bringing hardship. Generally, taking these things into consideration is shirk khafi. And especially when ignorance and wrong beliefs are included, then it is a shirk jali. This is in Mirqatul Mafati. There is a hadith in Sunan Abu Dawood, another hadith that the Holy Prophet said, considering anything unlucky is from shaitan. 
The above mentioned ahadith make it clear that considering suffer unlucky and not having any important or happy celebration like marriage, etc. Some people don't do uh, marriage in suffer, thinking it's, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, can bring some problem. Are all of the beliefs of the pre-Islamic days, which have no basis in Islam. In the same way, keeping eggs, etc., in the name of Tera Tezi is also useless and ought to be avoided. Besides Arabs of the period of ignorance, many people throughout the world have in the past and still believe in bad omens. For instance, if a cat crosses someone's path, it is considered a bad omen. If someone sneezes once, it is considered a bad one. If you sneeze twice, it's okay. I mean, these are all the beliefs of people. And of course, we know Friday the 13th, um, the um, Christians, many Christians, consider this to be unlucky because they, th uh, they claim that Nauz Billah, Isa salam, was crucified on Friday the 13th. As Muslims, we should know that no matter what shape or form a superstition takes, we should not believe in them. You know, soon some people here in America and I don't know other places in the Europe and other places, they celebrate Halloween, October 31st, in which children wear scary costumes and go door to door saying trick or treat. This was concocted in Europe, originally called All Hallows Eve, even before that All Saints Day, and then it became All Hallows Eve and it became Halloween, you know. People wear costumes to ward off ghosts. This is a celebration of a false belief. Which, you know, goes like that. They say that the uh, uh, souls of the bad people, they come out on this day. So either you wear uh, scary costumes and act like that, them, or you try to feed them the candy. So trick or treat like that. But that's also one of the superstition and a wrong belief. And as far as possible, we should try to avoid participating in that. Uh, this thing has become very commercialized nowadays because they want to sell a lot of costumes of different kind. And children, they, they want costumes. 
because they see whatever you know other people do they want to copy them and uh, and maybe every year they want a new costume because the last last year's costume is no good so you have to buy a new costume for them i mean it has become very difficult the you know how to make a child understand all this is very difficult you know i remember we moved to a new house where i live in rockland county october 30th and we were not prepared because you know some kids come you have to give them candy otherwise they will they say trick or tr- trick or treat so nowadays only small kids come with their parents but before some teenagers used to come you know and we were not prepared the next day was halloween we just moved in one day before so the teenagers knocked at the door and we didn't open so some of them they did the graffiti on my picture window you know on the thing and they laughed see then we realized that you know this is uh, october 31st is a thing ibn masud radhiyallahu ta'ala no said all of us sometimes have such baseless thoughts except that allah removes them through tawakkul trust in allah from this statement of ibn mas'ud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu we learn that tawakkul is not believing in the heart the whisperings coming into mind from shaitan of course with regard to bad omens neither acting upon it its results nor expressing belief of the same we will then not be taken to task for any such wrong beliefs by allah on the day of judgment if you start believing in these things then we are in trouble <laughs> we are supposed to know what our religion says and our religion says no there is no such thing as this it's all shaitan who has created all this put people's mind as for the statement of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam reported in bukhari sharif and narrated by ibn umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu la adwa wala tiara wa shu'umu fi salas fil mar'ati wa dari wa dabba if ill omen was possible it would be found in a woman a house and a horse the bad omen according to this hadith is understood to be a woman who is not fertile means she doesn't have any children or who uses scolding words you know abusing a house which is small and insufficient for one's needs or it's situated next to a bad neighbor you know i know my wife had a friend who retired and went to south carolina and she bought a house there she had such a bad neighbor that eventually you know going to police complaining didn't help or anything eventually after so many years of you know getting <laughs> she had to move out from there if you you know if you're unlucky and have a bad neighbor like that so you whenever you see you want to buy a house you have to make sure what school district you are buying and what kind of neighborhood it is so the words if it is possible if it was possible should be taken to mean there is no bad omen in them according to the scholars i mean if it was possible that means it's not there there is no bad omen in there In another hadith reported in Bukhari Sharif and narrated by Anas bin Malik radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu Rasulullah sallam says la adwa wa la tiara wa yujibun al fal qalu wa ma al fal 
کالا کلیمتن تیبت دیر از نو اسپریڈنگ آف ڈیزیز فرام ون پرسن ٹو انادر ایکسیپٹ وتھ اللہ پرمیشن یو آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ کامن ڈیزیز نائی دیر از دیر ٹیکنگ آف اومنس فرام دا فلائٹ آف برڈس بٹ فال ڈز فیسینیٹ می فال وٹ از فال سو وین کوشچن وٹ واز مین بائی فال ہی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ریپلائڈ اٹ از گڈ ورڈس وچ ہیرلڈ اے گڈ اومن دا اسکالرس ایکسپلین فال ایز ٹیکنگ اے گڈ اومن فرام اے گڈ نیوز اور اے سملر ہیپننگ فار ایگزامپل گڈ ڈریم مینس رویا سالحا دیر از اے حدیث ان بخارش ان ترمیزی نیریٹیڈ بائی ابن عمر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سیڈ دیر رسول اللہ صلیم سیڈ ہی سو ان ہز ڈریم دیٹ اے ڈارک کلرڈ وومن وتھ ان رولی ہیئر لیفٹ مدینہ and settled in Jofa. From this he interpreted the good omen of the epidemic of infections, infectious diseases leaving Medina. See, as we know that when the Sahaba migrated to Medina, you know, over there there were a lot of diseases in Medina and they were not used to the climate over there. So they got sick. They were getting really sick over there. Because in Makkah, Ibrahim salam had made the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when Ibrahim salam made the Kaaba with the help of his son, and he said all the fruits and everything should be provided here and people, you know. So the Makkah was all right, Makkah, you know. But when they went to Medina, So Rasul Sallam when as we all know that when people go for uh, Umrah or Hajj in the first three rounds around the Kaaba, they expose their uh, shoulders and then do run as if they are doing like a pahlwan, you know, three, three rounds like that. The reason for that was to show to the people of Makkah, you know, when they came for Umrah, that we are not sick, we are still strong. <laughs> of the show to that. And this was the uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi had made the dua for Medina that, O oh Allah, make this city, Medina, where we have migrated, also um, you know, the city of Amman, Amman and very, uh, you know, peaceful city and And now we can go, when we go to Makkah and we go to Medina, we see the difference that how people are different in Medina and how there are people like that. So this was the dream he got and he interpreted from that, that uh, the diseases that were there in Medina, they left. Now I want to, I have five more minutes to round it up. We know that The righteous people of the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu will from time to time see Ruya Saleha, means the true dreams. You know, the true dreams come towards the morning time. And they will, whatever they will dream, and this will be, will be a guiding light for them as well as others. All the prophets used to get, get true dreams before. Before they started getting any messages from Allah, even Rasulullah he was getting true dreams. So now that's one, o- one over 46 part of prophethood. Now no more prophets are coming in this ummah. And until the end of time, Rasulullah was the last of the prophet. But people who are righteous people of this ummah, from time to time will be guided through these two dreams, known as Ruya Saleha.
There is another topic here. In the hadith, it mentioned adwa. What does adwa mean? The common diseases which people or animals acquire are not spread from one to another, except with Allah's permission. Modern science has proven that germs do transmit from one another when you shake hand or do anything like that. But there is no scientific explanation for the fact that why some people do get sick and others don't. I'm a microbiologist. I know how the germs, I can even see the germs wherever they are. See? But there is no guarantee that someone is going to get, except for some diseases which are mentioned, and there are ahadis regarding that. For instance, leprosy, plague, and all that, and some viral infection, like flu, for instance. I mean, the flu season is going to come soon. It, it's something that spreads from one person to another. And the best thing described for that one by the scientists, and I'm one of those people, microbiologists, that you wash your hands well. When you wash your hand with soap and water, 99.99% .99 of all the germs are washed out. And we, as Muslims, you know, we, um, we make wudu five times a day, <laughs> you know, we, and we use water to do all kinds of cleaning and everything. But those diseases that have exceptions, you know, some of them we might have heard about uh, Ebola and all those kinds of diseases, you know, some viral diseases. And uh, everybody knows about the plague. So the hadith says that if you hear that any place has plague, do not enter that place. And if you happen to be in such place, do not flee from it. It's called quarantine, you know. Uh, we all know about quarantine, meaning strict isolation imposed to prevent the spread of disease. This may be a discovery of the recent times, but Islam from its inception recommended this practice to its adherents. You know, the Hadith says, if you have a plague in one place, few of town, you know, don't enter it. But if you are in there, you cannot come out also, because you have to, there has to be a certain period of time which is called quarantine. And for viral infection, the quarantine is long. You know, it has to be at least six weeks or something. Imagine if people try to stay away from each other due to common illnesses. Our religion is based on close contact with each other to promote brotherhood. We are encouraged to pray together, eat together, and come together at many events and functions. According to the recommendations of infection control, the best remedy to avoid getting infected is washing of hands. And before eating anything, you should wash your hands anyway. This is a sunnah. So if you wash your hands, you know, you will not inject anything like that. So, Islam teaches us the most hygienic principles to avoid infecting others. All right? But if, suppose somebody has flu or some disease like that, I mean, you know, the best thing is to hold the back side of your hand. E even when you are in the prayer, if you sneeze, you know, you bring your hand. This is sunnah. Because if you do it like this and then you shake hand with somebody <laughs> passing the jumps to them, you know. So this is very, very important that we re recognize that. All right. And uh, as far as other illnesses are concerned, they, you cannot pass one from one to another. So I'm going to stop here. May Allah give us a tawfiq to stay away from superstitions and put our trust in Allah alone for all our affairs. Amen.